The Lord is near to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of all that fear him, hears their cry and saves them. Good morning and welcome to our service of worship for the uh, 2nd of August. Uh, we have prepared this at home uh, to give you just a simple service and use some footage from St Christopher's in Karamolka. Uh, please feel well, most welcome to join in. The parts in yellow are for the congregational responses, but the hymns also are included to be sung. So enjoy. Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, the solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, pure in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe. This gift of love this gift of and love. righteousness Scorned by the ones He came to save Till on that cross as Jesus died The wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on Him was laid Pure in the death of Christ I live. There in the ground His body lay. Light of the world by darkness lay. Then bursting forth in glorious day Up from the grave He rose again And as He stands in victory Since curse has lost its grip on me For I am His and He is mine Bought with the precious blood of Christ Guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry, first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can never block me from his hand till he returns or calls me home here in the power of christ i stand in christ alone in christ alone From the grave he rose 
Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, with whom we wrestle until the break of day, make us long to seek your face beyond the limits of our strength, that in our wounds we may remember you, and in your blessing we may find ourselves. Through Jesus Christ. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 32, and beginning at verse 22. The same night he got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans, and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you asked my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Which is not from deceitful lips Let my vindication come from your presence Let your eyes look on the things that are upright You have tested my heart You have visited me in the night you have tried me and have found nothing i have purposed that my mouth shall not transgress concerning the works of men by the word of your lips i have kept away from the paths of the destroyer uphold my steps in your paths that my footsteps may not slip I have called upon you for you will hear me oh God incline your ear to me and hear my speech show your marvelous love Shall be 
satisfied when I awake in your likeness. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. As for me, I will see your face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake. I shall be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 9 and beginning at the first verse. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all. God blessed for ever. Amen. It is not as though the word of God has failed, for not all Israelites truly belong to Israel, and not all of Abraham's children are his true descendants. But it is through Isaac that descendants shall be named for you. This means that it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God but the children of the promise are counted as descendants. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
thirsty you won't be denied I felt every teardrop when in darkness you cried and I'm here to remind you that for those tears I The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew, chapter 14, beginning at the 13th verse. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away, you give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds, and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. May my words be in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How's your faith journey? Probably a difficult question to answer, just off the cuff, but it's a question that should be on our minds. At the moment I'm writing an essay about um, supervision. It's a reflective essay. Uh, reflecting on how it's going for me and how uh, there are areas in which I need to learn, areas in which I need to stretch myself and areas where, oh, to be quite frank, probably I've got it wrong. But it is through that reflective process that we can move on and become better at what it is we're called to. And need I say this, that uh, this is part of our faith journey as well. God wants us to reflect on this faith journey. And our first reading from Jacob encountering a man, and I'll use that in quite inverted commas, Jesus encountering a man who wrestled with him and would not let him move forward. It was uh, a time of great difficulty for Jacob. He had run away from his brother after stealing his, both his birthright and his father's blessing. But God had blessed him and now he was starting to move back to make things right. No doubt in his conscience there was the concern of his failure to be a good brother and perhaps his um, inability to keep the family together. But he would return to Esau a success, and Esau um, hopefully would welcome him back 
as a fellow uh, worker in the nation. Now, the, the problem, the problem is, is this wrestling with God. But it's a review that we perhaps need to do from time to time. I know when things are hard or difficult that we often will drift into uh, places of darkness or places where we seem to be saying to God, Oh God, this is too hard. This is not right. And yet it is in these darkest places that we will find that God is trying to teach us and to expand our faith and to make us better people to better serve his work. And so when we look at our uh, faith journey, sometimes we need to think about the hard times and what it is that we've learnt in them. Jacob ends his story with talking about how he had seen God. His encounter was truly one with God and that he'd been blessed. And how often is it that when we look back we find that God has blessed us even in the darkest times. And I'm reminded of the image of the footprints story. You remember when the two footprints went along but every now and again in the darkest parts of the person's life there was only one set of footprints. And although interpreting it as God having abandoned them God showed them that it was when Jesus walked and carried the person that through the darkest times that they continued to progress. So where is your faith journey? What are you doing? What are you learning? Time in prayer is important. The Anglican practice of morning and evening office uh, brings us into the God space. Uh, it is equally as valid to, to do a quiet time, to spend an hour with God each day, to uh, allow him not only to teach you, but to speak to you. And uh, there's always the difficulty if we try and fill it up with activity rather than listening. But the, uh, the journey, the journey is important. We cannot forget that God is walking with us. For Paul, in our second reading, Paul was talking about his anguish. See, the problem with Paul is that he wanted everyone to be saved. And he could see the chosen people, of which he was a member, the Israelites, were being excluded from the kingdom because of what, had hap what they had done in not listening to Jesus when Jesus was there. So he had the anguish of what was going on. And no doubt it was heavily on his soul. But there's also the other thing uh, about it. Think about the disciples. Remember the story that we hear in the Gospel reading. It begins with Jesus in solitude, obviously like uh, Jacob, uh, spending time in prayer and with his father. But now he comes and finds the people. And the people are chasing him because they believe that he has something for them. And he sees them and he has compassion on them. The image that uh, is often portrayed is like sheep without a shepherd. But he sees them, reaches out, and to those who are ill, he heals and brings them back to the state that God would have them in. 
And then comes the need. It is late, it is remote, and they have no food. The disciples had the solution. Oh, tell them to go and get their own food. We'll be right. But the disciples were challenged by Jesus. Here is a situation. Here is a ministry. Here is something that needs to be done. You do it. Always frightening to pray. Because when we pray for a situation, God has this terrible tendency to, to whisper quietly in our ear. Well, get on and do it. And if you note, when they gathered their resources, they had five loaves and two fishes. And think of it as five bread rolls and two tins of, of tuna. Not even my best mother's union or my best guild could feed five of that, let alone 5,000. And uh, they brought the resource to Jesus and endorsed by Jesus and blessed by Jesus. Not only did they feed everyone to, to fullness, but they gathered 12 baskets up of the scraps that were, were left over. What a story of abundance from a story of shortage. So where are you today? Are you reflecting on your journey? Are you spending time wrestling with God? Are you list agonising over the... Uh, situation of various parts of the world of various people are you listening to god and obeying him when he says well go on get on and do it looking forward as we do at this time of the year and starting to make plans for where we're going although that is not the easiest thing let us encourage one another to spend time with God, whether it be a struggle or a joy for that time, but focusing on hearing his voice and reaching out in his name. Amen. Let us together affirm the faith of the Church. We, we believe, believe in one God, the Father, Father the Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light to light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through his cross. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. A prayer for our diocese. God of hope and love, you have called us to be the body of Christ. Inspire us in the diocese of Loughborough 
to worship with joy and energy, serve with compassion and be welcoming of others in our communities so that we all know the good news of Jesus, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory forever. Amen. Nothing can come between us and the love of God. With confidence, let us bring our prayers before God, who answers all our needs. We respond to the bidding, hear us, we pray, with Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that during times of trial, it will show forth the love of God, acting with kindness and compassion. Hear us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Bishop John and our Rural Deans, the Reverend Anne Ford at York, the Reverend John Fowler at Flinders, the Reverend Brian Bascom at Ayr, and the Reverend Glenn MacDonald at Upper Spencer Gold. And our district team, Andrew, Louise, Anne, Christine, David and Ted, and all our LLMs. Hear us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sister diocese of Mandalay and Bishop David, for Christ Cathedral Parish in Mandalay City, and for the church music school at the cathedral, for quality teaching staff in Bible and music, so that the students may grow in their knowledge and love of God, live godly lives and learn how to do, be how to disciple others. And for Bishop David as he leads the development of this school. Hear us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all times and generations, we pray that your kingdom may come and that we and all believers may be ready for that day and that the gospel may be proclaimed so that all people may know you of your mercy and love before the return of your Son in glory. Hear us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who lack food and clothing, that nations with abundant resources will come to their aid with urgency. Hear us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we have, may have rain where we need it and seasonable weather. Hear us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are lonely, that the love of God will be their constant strength and companion. Hear us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, that they will be comforted and healed by compassionate, the compassionate one. Hear us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, that it will become more conformed to Christ by sharing at the Eucharistic table. Hear us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially remembering uh, Barbara, who uh, died of COVID yesterday. For all who once ate the bread of life, that they may be called to the eternal banquet. Hear us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love, you sustain and nourish all who hunger for your presence. Hear us and help us to reach out to your inviting hand. Hear us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayer. Grant that, that what we have asked in faith, faith we, we may, may by your grace receive, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ, 
His Spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God for ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. For glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever living God. We give you thanks and praise for our Saviour Jesus Christ, who by the power of the Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine, and we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we work, worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ and the blood of Christ.
Let us pray. Bountiful God, at this table you graciously feed us with the bread of life and the cup of eternal salvation. May we who have reached out our hands to receive this sacrament be strengthened in your service. We who have sung your praises tell of your glory and truth in our lives. We who have seen the greatness of your love see you face to face in your kingdom and come to worship you with all the saints forever. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise. Our service is planned for next Sunday, August the 9th, a morning prayer at Edisburg at 9am. Morning prayer at Yorktown at 9.30am. At 9.30 also at Minlerton and Curramulga there will be Holy Communion. And at 11am there will be Holy Communion at Port Vincent and Port Victoria. Coffee and Craft continues on Friday, August the 7th. Uh, at 10 o'clock, talk to Anne for further details. Our Mother's Union will gather for their usual meeting on Wednesday, August the 12th at 2pm. Coming up at the end of August on the 26th, there is a casual soup luncheon. Uh, we meet around noon and it will cost you $6 to enjoy some fine food together. Coming up on Sunday, August 23rd, is our annual general meeting. It will be held at Minlerton, but details are not yet finalised. And it will be after the district service on, sun, on the Sunday. If you have a need to write a report, all reports actually should be in by now. So please get them to Louise as soon as possible. Thank you. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you this day and always.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Yeah.